Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tank Be Chopping, and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. Alright guys, what we're going to be doing on this cut is a mid to high fade. Uh, we're going to do some curls on top, you know what I'm saying? We're going to hit them with that curl sponge, or actually we're going to use a towel. But, nonetheless, we're doing the curls on top, mid to high fade, add some enhancements on the beard, you know what I'm saying? Enhancements on the lineup. Just make my client look as icy as we can possibly get them. So first thing is first guys, as you can see I'm combing out my client's hair, uh, we're just going to comb out his hair, comb out his beard a little bit, just get everything prepped, ready for us to start this fade. And you want to make sure that you're combing out the hair the way it grows, that way you don't have any discrepancies when you're cutting and you got to comb it a different way. So try to comb the hair out the way, uh, the way it grows, that way you have a better look of what's going on. So now I'm taking my X Evos from Gamma. And I'm setting in my initial bald guideline. And as you can see, we're coming up to where uh, his point would be in the vertical bar, meaning the C cup. We're coming right below that, and that's where we're setting in the guideline. And we're going all the way around. And y'all know how your boy does it. Y'all know I like to uh, drop it down in the back slightly, slightly. So that's what I'm doing here, guys. And then we're just following it up on the other side, making sure these both sides match. Now I'm taking my Babyliss FX3 shaver and what I'm doing is I'm knocking all the sides down the skin getting it as short as I can possibly get it however the closer I get to my initial bar guideline I'm making I, I use a, a slight flick out motion and I'm making sure I don't put the same amount of pressure that I'm putting towards the bottom of this fade and the reason for that is I want to make sure I have a smooth transition into the fade into the stubble that way it's not a harsh line. And once again, guys, we're going to do this all the way around the head just to make sure it's nice and even all the way around. All right, so now we're actually moving into some fade work, and I'm going in with my X ergos with my lever all the way open. Uh, I haven't done a video using my X ergos in a minute, and uh, I decided to do a video for y'all guys. So here it is, uh, lever all the way open, setting in my first, or I'm sorry, my second guideline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade this section out uh, using a down fading technique. So I'm setting in my line, but I'm going to start to fade down by closing my lever little by little. So as you saw me do right there, I just closed my lever halfway, and I'm coming halfway into that section. And then I'm going to close my lever notch by notch after that, working my way down. And even though that may not get out this line 100%, that's totally fine, guys, because we can go back in with the trimmer if needed. And as you can see, I'm doing this a good amount of times, guys. I'm just trying to be as consistent as I can be. Uh, really, what I'm trying to do is stop myself from doing too much detail work. So if you're really, really consistent with it, sometimes you don't have to go back and do so much detail work. But sometimes you still might. But now I'm taking my number two guard and what I'm doing is I'm debulking a lot of this area. Uh, the closer I get to the, the top of the head, or I'm sorry, not the top of the head, but the parietal ridge or where the longer hair meets the short hair, I'm making a, uh, making sure I use more of a flick out motion and I'm using you know more of a float instead of a following the shape of the head. I'm really just floating that clipper up in a way, that way it fades into the top without leaving any harsh lines. And once again, this is my number two guard. So now I'm doing the same exact thing with my 1.5 guard. And just in case y'all are curious, guys, these are the Gamma Dub guards that I'm using right here. So this is the 1.5 guard lever all the way open. And I'm coming right below what I do with my number two guard. Still using the flick out motion, making sure that I, know, that I don't leave any harsh lines. And then I'm going to close my lever and I'm coming right below that. And this is me just clearing out a lot of this bolt, guys, making this a little easier for me. That way I can actually see, you know, what I need to fade into. So now here is my one guard lever all the way open and I'm coming a little lower, meaning I'm not going all the way up to where I did with my 1.5 guard. And as you can see, I'm making sure that I keep combing the hair or brushing the hair. You know, if you have a brush, that's perfectly fine. But what I'm doing is I'm combing that hair down. That way the hair doesn't curl up. And I think something is faded when it, act, when it actually isn't. So when you keep combing the hair, you actually get a better look of what's going on. And it clears out some of that excess debris. That way you can actually see what's going on under all that loose hair and the hair that's curling up. And then I'm going to close my lever, as y'all saw, well, my lever's already closed, but I'm doing the same thing, coming right below what I do with my lever all the way open, still using that flick out motion, and still combing that hair down, that way I can see what's going on. 
And remember, you want to try your hardest not to go as high as you did previously, because if you do, you'll leave a line. But that's really not a big issue because you, you can always go back in with a bigger guard and take that line out. Now here is my zero guard, lever all the way open. Same thing guys, coming right below what I did with my number one guard. And even though techni technically my zero open is a number one guard, I'm still trying to keep it right below what I did with that number one. And then once again guys, we're gonna adjust that lever closed as needed and work our way down. And if y'all paying attention, you can see that this blend is already coming together. Now, yes, there is some discrepancies in the cut. There is going to uh, need to be some detail work to be done, but the blend is coming together. You know, it, it's already looking good as is, but we're still going to go back in and detail it when it's that time to do so. Now I'm going in with just my clipper, no guard on my clipper, lever all the way open, and I'm just cleaning up these little discrepancies at the bottom of this fade. And as you can see, I'm really using just the corner of my blade, and the reason for that is it's a little more precise, and it lets me pinpoint more on what needs to be done opposed to just using that whole blade. And then I'm gonna close my lever as needed, you know, just to take out more of these discrepancies. Uh, lever all the way closed is obviously gonna be more towards the bottom of this fade, and then we're gonna open it and move our way up if needed. Now I'm going in with my trimmers, trying to erase that bottom line, trying to get this blend 100% ready to go. And we're just flicking at that line, floating out, making sure we don't leave any uh, any of the harsh lines. And if we do, as you just saw right here, I switch my uh, I switch back to my clipper, and that's gonna help me get this transition to look better. All right, now what I'm doing here, guys, I'm just combing out the hair a little bit towards the top. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to go in and freehand it just to get the blend to blend into the top a little better. So as you can see, all I'm doing is freehanding this. I don't have a guard on my clipper. I'm just really shaping up this area of the haircut. That way it looks nice and blended. And you want to make sure you're taking your time while doing this. That way you don't patch up your client and you don't take off too much hair. And now we're just going back in, adding some more detail work. I believe this is my 1.5 guard right here. And I apologize if I get these guards wrong. They don't have a color code on them. So I'm just uh, going off of what I feel that I'm doing or what I know I'm doing. But anyways, guys, now we're going in, lining up my client. As you can see, I started off in the middle of my client's forehead, setting that first initial guideline, and now I'm working my way over to that vertical bar. I'm going to hit that vertical bar and then really just uh, trying to line up this lineup and get it as sharp as we can get it and as straight as we can get it without pushing it back. Now, mind you, you may have to push some lineups back depending on the head shape or depending on how the hairline looks, and that's perfectly fine, guys. You just don't want to push it too far back. I like to call it a controlled pushback. You're gonna have to push back some hair to make the lines look nice and sharp. So now that the line is in there, I'm going back in doing some more detail work, just getting this blend really to, to look better and to look more put together. And the reason why I did do this now is every time I put my line up on my client, it lets me see more discrepancies in the cut. It lets me see if there's any just malfunctions with how it's looking. So I always go back in after I line up my client to clean it up some more and make it look even better. And if y'all are curious, guys, this is the new X-Pro Blade uh, from Gamma and Stylecraft. So if you're interested in purchasing it, you can go to their website and use my code TANK10. Uh, save yourself a little bit of money. Uh, in my opinion, this is their best blade that they have for the trimmer. I wasn't a big fan of the Ultimate 2.0 blade. Uh, I believe this blade is better in my opinion. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, it's, it's getting put to work. And as you can see now, guys, we're just lining up the beard, trying to get it as sharp as we can get it. But at the same time, I want to keep it thick, but I'm trying to keep it sharp also.
Now we're gonna go ahead and fade in the beard, starting off with my lever open, and I'm just closing it as needed towards the top of that beard. And as you can see, I just moved on to do a little bit more detail work. I saw some, you know, some little things that I wanted to touch up, but the way his beard is, uh, the way his beard is, it's really not that hard to fade in. So sometimes you'll have to do more steps. But now I'm gonna go ahead and comb his beard out some more. I am gonna freehand it a little bit, clean it up, give it a nicer shape. And that's what I'm doing here. And we're just taking off the very ends, you know what I'm saying? Just, just shaping it up a little bit. We're not trying to, uh, to take off much length. We're just trying to clean it all up and make it look nice and sharp. Alright guys, now I did not record the opposite side of the haircut. Uh, what I'm doing here is just lining in, uh, lining up the opposite side. Uh, what I did record for y'all was all the enhancements and the extra little you know bells and whistles that I did for my client. Uh, so y'all gonna see me right here. I'm gonna put two types of enhancements on my client. We're gonna do the no drip by 245 and then I'm also gonna put some hair fibers and then I'm also gonna use the pencil just to make the, the line pop up. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, make the lineup pop out a little more, make it look a little sharper and you'll see how I do it here in a minute. And once again, guys, if y'all like these tools you see me using, you can go to the Gamma Plus or the Stylecraft website and order these tools. You can use my code Tank10. Also, if you like the shaver that I was using, I was using the Babyless Pro shaver. You can go to BabylessPro.com. I have a discount code for Babyless now. So you can go to BabylessPro.com, purchase that shaver that I was using earlier on in the video, and you can use my code. It's the same code, Tank10. Save yourself a little bit of money on there also. And that works with anything on the Babyless Pro website. Also, guys, while I'm still fading in this beard and whatnot, I do want y'all to know that uh, there is a Discord that I'm in. Uh, it's the Rum Barber Zero Gap Discord. I'm going to leave the link in my description. So if you're in a Discord, you want to chat with me and like-minded barbers, you can join our Discord. I'm going to make sure to put the link in my description so y'all can click on that, join, you know, and we can just talk about whatever, clippers, tools, you know, all that good stuff. But anyways, guys, now we're going back into this haircut. As you can see, I had my client with the lather on his face. Now I have the hot towel, you know, warming everything up, making sure that I open up those pores making it easier for me to shave and what I'm doing here is I'm just taking all the lather off his face and now I'm gonna use my razor to get these lines super super sharp uh, we're making sure we're stretching that skin back and we're just trying to get these lines as sharp as we can possibly get them and remember guys if you have a problem with using your straight razor uh, if you remember to try to keep your razor as flat as possible you will lessen the chance of you nicking your client Shout out to my boy Tito Beats. Y'all make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. You can follow him on Instagram. I believe his Instagram is at Tito underscore Beats. All right, guys. So now we're going to move on to the actual enhancements. What I'm using here is uh, No Drip by 245. This uh, compressor right here, this gun, is one of my uh, favorite guns right here. I have the link in my description. You can go purchase it off of Amazon. Uh, it's a super great gun. Uh, it hasn't clogged up on me yet. I, you know, I still do clean it really good, but I just feel that it's a stronger gun and it, it lessens the chance of it getting clogged up. So that's why I really like it. But y'all know how I do my enhancements, guys. I, I try not to make it look too fake, so I try not to spray too much. But as y'all can see, it's, it's really filling in those lighter areas and making his beard really pop and making his hairline uh, pop even more. And then what we're going to do after this is we're going to hit him with some hairspray. We're going to throw some uh, Topic hair fibers in. And then we're going to hit him with some hairspray again just to lock in those fibers. And the same thing with the hair topic, guys. You don't want to spray too much. You want to just pump a little bit, you know what I'm saying, just to where it looks nice and natural and it doesn't look, you know, overly done. And now what I'm doing, guys, I'm going in with my barber pencil. And what this is going to do is this is going to help create contrast between, between his skin and the hairline. And it's going to really make them lines pop even more. So we're going to put this line, uh, the barber pencil, we're going to use it on his whole lineup. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm slowly going to try to uh, fade out this line with my trimmers. And then I'm going to hit him with the razor one more time just to make everything super, super crisp.
and these are some techniques you can do to make your haircuts look like super super sharp if you're uh if your client's going out to, you know that day or if you're going to take a picture or a video this really helps enhance everything like it helps make everything look even sharper So that's what I'm doing here guys. I'm making sure I fade out that line with that trimmer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over this with my razor just to get everything sharper like I said earlier and it's really really going to make these haircuts or these lines pop even more. And it's something that I used to do a lot. Uh, I kind of scaled back on doing it due to my schedule. But moving forward, I'm going to continue to do it uh, more today. You know what I'm saying? Or not today, but I'm going to continue to do it more often. And uh, really just do this more because I feel that my clients really feel like, oh, this haircut is super, super nice. Not saying the haircut isn't nice without it. But when you add it, I just feel that it gives it a better look. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks super, super sharp. And you'll see right now when I'm done here in a minute. As you can see now, it's already looking sharper and looking even more crisp and just more precise than normal. All right, so now what I'm doing is, remember I said earlier we're gonna put some curls on top. So normally I would use a curl sponge. Uh, I don't know what happened to my curl sponge. So I, I, you can also use a towel when you do this and we're just adding some curls into the top of my client's hair and that's the look he's going for. So that's what we're doing here, guys. We're using the towel to create them curls. And the same way you would use a curl sponge, use the, curl, uh, use the towel, guys. Alright guys, so check it out. This is how my boy Craig came into the shop looking. It been two weeks. He said, Tank, hook me up. I need the special. I said, say no more fam. I got you. This is the finished product. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comment section. If y'all like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure and subscribe one time for your boy. Remember guys, if you're in the Houston, Texas area and you're trying to get a haircut from your boy, you can go to my website, tankbechopping.com. You can, you can make an appointment there and make sure that you put uh, that you want it to be for a YouTube if you want it to be for YouTube, obviously. Uh, make sure to put in the comment section you want it to be for YouTube. Try my best to record it. And uh, yeah, YouTube, that's basically it. I hope y'all like this video. I appreciate y'all. Until next time, let's go. Yeah.